Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back, or it's the first time to my channel, then welcome. So for today's video, we are gonna be kicking it back old school. We're going back to the basics. I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to create the perfect smoky eye, the perfect eyeshadow look. I'm breaking it down for you step by step. I literally lay all of my secrets out on the table for you guys. I give you every single tip and trick I've ever learned about how to apply eyeshadow. And throughout all of my years of like practicing and trying new things and also going to makeup school, I really feel like I've learned some really key techniques that are really important in creating like that perfectly blended, seamless, not muddy, just great smoky eye. So I'm so excited to be giving you guys all of my tips and I really, really hope that it's gonna help you guys out and make things, you know, a little bit more doable for you. I would love if you guys could let me know in the comments what you thought of today's video and if you have any additional questions, I will definitely try and help you out. And I do plan on doing more of these like back to basics tutorials because I feel like the basics are still really, really important and I would love to know which ones you guys would like to see next. This video is long enough, so I'm gonna stop talking. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I actually asked you guys on Twitter what your biggest struggles were when it came to eyeshadow application. And first of all, I just wanna thank everybody who participated and who answered my question because it did really, really help me in like shaping this video and understanding what the biggest struggles were and what I should really focus on in this video. And one of like the biggest concerns that you guys seem to have was making your eyeshadows pop and not only making them pop, but also keeping them vibrant throughout the day and just like make them actually show up on your eyelids. Now, I'm sure this is going to be a very redundant tip because you probably heard this time and time again, but it is probably one of the most important steps for creating an eyeshadow look, and that is applying a primer. Now, a primer is basically the foundation to every single eye look, whether you're creating something more natural, more dramatic, colorful, a primer really is necessary because not only is it going to allow the eyeshadow to actually last throughout the day, but different primers can also help in keeping your eyeshadows vibrant and also just making them really pop on the eyes. So if you find that your smoky eye isn't looking as dark as you want or your bright eyeshadows really aren't showing up, then there are different primers and different ways to prep your eyes in order to to help that. Now this is for me personally, my favorite type of primer to use. You've definitely heard of the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. Now this is a cream eyeshadow that dries down, so what's really great about this is that it will completely cancel out everything that's on your eyelids and it will also sort of just like lock in the eyeshadows that you place on top of it. Now another option is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer in the shade Fix and there's also one in the shade Eden. This is basically just like a liquefied version of MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot and I'm just going to apply this all over my lid, all the way up to my brow bone. Now you could totally blend this out with your finger, but I'm just going to take a little concealer brush and I'm just going to buff that in and make sure it's nicely blended out. Now as for the eyeshadow look that we're going to be creating today, I'm going to be doing the classic smoky eye just because I feel like this is the base for any eye look. Also keep in mind that you could use any color combination of your choice. This really is just about the technique and not so much about the actual colors used. So before I go in to really do anything, the first thing that I like to do is set my brow bone to my crease with a little bit of a bone colored powder or a translucent powder. The reason why I like to do this is because I like to have a completely dry surface to work on. If your primer is even just a little bit tacky, the eyeshadow that you apply on top of it could potentially grab onto the primer in a certain areas, which would create a patchy look, and that's obviously not what we want. We want something that looks really nice and smooth, so I do like to set my eyes from my crease to my brow bone. So I'm gonna take Blanc Type from MAC. This is my MAC 224, and I'm just going to set, like I said, my crease to my brow bone. So next it's time to move on to the transition shade. If you want to achieve a really seamless gradient look, it is really important to lay down a transition shade so that the eyeshadow that we apply underneath it has something to actually blend into. Think of it like this. If we go in right away with a really, really dark crease shade and we just start to blend that out, it won't necessarily have actually something to blend into in order to create that really smooth gradient look. Whereas if you have a shade that's a few shades lighter than that crease shade, it will just help that shade just fade really, really nicely. Honestly, for me, no matter what eyeshadow look I'm doing, I will always go towards one of these two shades. This one is Peach Smoothie from Makeup Geek, and it's sort of like a warmer, peachier shade. And this is Wake Up Call from ColourPop, and this is a little bit more neutral. I find that these really do work with almost any single eye look that I do. Even if it is a little bit more colorful, I still will use either one of these depending on how I'm feeling. Now, as far as what type of brush you wanna use for the transition shade, it's really important to use something that's big and fluffy. 
because the bigger and fluffier the brush, the more diffuse the powder is going to be. Whereas the smaller and denser the brush is going to be, the more concentrated the color is going to apply. Now I'm gonna name all of like the brush options that I use in the little product shots that you guys are gonna see. But today I'm gonna use my MAC 224. So for today's look, I'm going to take Peach Smoothie from Makeup Geek and I'm just going to load up the color onto my brush. So the transition shade is typically applied between the crease and the brow bone. So I'm just gonna to start to apply that in that area, going in windshield wiper motions to start to really buff that out. When you're applying the transition shade is also when you wanna start mapping out the shape of your eye look. So let's say you wanna go for something a little bit more elongated and you wanna create an illusion with your eyeshadow and make your eyes look a bit more almond shaped, then you're gonna to wanna to sort of flick the eyeshadow out at the outer corner towards the tail end of your brow. Whereas if you wanted to create a more of a rounded look, then you basically just wanna like follow the shape of your eye. Typically for me, I like to elongate my eyes just because I find that it's flattering for my eye shape, but really do whatever works best for you. All right guys, so now it is time to start building up some definition into the crease. Now, when I was on Twitter, reading through all of your comments, a lot of you guys were saying that you found it very difficult to really like finish off an eye look without it turning into a muddy mess. If you wanna go from a very light transition shade like Peach Smoothie to a dark deep crease shade like Cocoa Bear, you may run into a little bit of a blending issue because these are so far apart from each other, they're not gonna really blend as smoothly as you may want. So what I actually like to do is I like to apply two crease shades. I typically like to do something that's right in between the transition and the darker crease shade that I'm going for. So for example, Note to Self from ColourPop is the perfect in-between shade because it's not that far off from Peach Smoothie and it's also not that far off from Cocoa Bear. So this is gonna be really great to transition the transition shade into the crease and it's going to also help create a smoother looking blend. So as far as the type of brush that you wanna use for your crease shade, I would recommend using something like a small blending brush. This is the Smith 230 and what's really nice about this is that it's nice and fluffy so it's going to diffuse the color but because it's small, it's going to be a lot more easy to pinpoint exactly where we want the color, especially compared to something like the big fluffy brush that we use to apply the transition shade. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people tend to make is using brushes that are too big because if you use a blending brush like this, you are going to basically start applying the eyeshadow way farther than you actually want to. And if you use something a little bit more precise, then you're really gonna pinpoint exactly where you want that shadow. But like I said, it's nice and fluffy, so it's not going to create something that's too harsh at the same time. All right, let's actually apply this stuff. So I'm going to take, like I said, note to self from ColourPop. So I'm picking up a little bit of the color, I'm tapping off the excess, I'm even wiping off a little bit on the back of my hand because I don't wanna go in with too much color all at once. So I actually like to apply my crease shades with my eyes open. This is another really great tip because obviously we walk around with our eyes open. We don't walk around with our eyes closed. This is something that my makeup school teacher said to us and it always stuck with me. So whenever I would apply makeup to clients, I would always ask them to open their eyes first so that I would know exactly where to actually put the eyeshadow. So for me personally, when I close my eyes, my crease is right over here. But when I open my eyes, my crease is actually slightly hidden because my eyes are just a little bit hooded. So the crease shade that I would have applied would be completely hidden. Whereas if I apply my eyeshadow with my eyes open, I can cheat my crease in order for it to actually show up. So I'm just going to start off by very lightly touching my eye with the brush and just going back and forth with very little product to start to blend that into my crease. And again, I'm following the shape that I created with the transition shade by flicking it out slightly. And you can see that is very slowly starting to create some depth into this look. Also, notice where I'm actually holding the brush. I'm holding my brush near the end and not right up onto the barrel. The reason why I'm doing that is because I actually have less control of my brush. And even though that doesn't really sound like something that you may necessarily want, it's actually really good, especially if you have a bit of a heavier hand because it's going to create a bit of a softer and lighter application rather than holding it really close to the bristles. You're gonna be applying the eyeshadow just a little bit too hard. So I'm really concentrating this color into that crease area. I'm not blowing it out as far as I did with the transition shade because the whole point is that I want that transition shade to peek out above the crease shade in order to keep that nice gradient going. So now it's time to go into the deeper crease shade. So I'm going to go into Cocoa Bear and I'm going to use the same brush going in with a very small amount of product 
and I'm applying this even more concentrated than the last shade to really deepen things up and keep things once again looking nice and blended. And I'm applying a very small amount at a time using a very light hand. Blending honestly takes a lot of patience. It's annoying, <laughs> trust me. Now, if you do want to go a little bit deeper in the crease, for example, I want to apply a little bit of Anastasia Fudge. I actually like to use a brush that's a lot smaller than the previous blending brush that we just used, just because I want it to be really, really nice and concentrated into the crease. I don't want to blow this out. I don't even know if you could call this a blending brush because it's so small, but this is the Morphe M506. As you can see, it's quite small compared to a normal size blending brush, but it's not dense at all. It still has a nice amount of like, movement to it and I'm going to start to really define my crease with that and because the brush is nice and small it's not going to blow it out too far so it's still going to keep that nice gradient that we've got going on and it's really going to pinpoint exactly where we want this color. I'm also going to start to just quickly apply some of this onto the outer corner of my eye and really like flick it out. So in order to blend out this shade, instead of going into my big fluffy brush, I actually like to go back into my blending brush. And that way you could be a little bit more precise with the blending as well. So I'm just using that blending brush to just buff that out and make sure everything is looking nice and diffused. All right guys, it is time to move on to the outer V. So the outer V of the eye is basically like a sideways V. So it goes into the crease, and then it goes down diagonal towards the lash line. And if you really want to like elongate your eye, that is really where you want to apply the deepest and darkest shade of your eye look. So my biggest tip for creating a really nice deep outer V is by using a very small brush. Just like everything else, I do like to be really nice and precise when it comes to my eyeshadow application. So the last thing you want to do is to go in with a blending brush like this and try to apply some color in that outer V. Not saying it won't work, but if you want something that's really precise and also really intense you want to pack that color on with a smaller brush because like I said a fluffier brush is really going to diffuse color a little bit more whereas a smaller denser brush like a pencil brush is going to pack on more pigment which will make something look a little bit more intense I'm actually going to use the Sephora brush because this is actually my all-time favorite one this is the Sephora Pro Precision smudge so I'm picking up a nice amount of the color onto my pencil brush on one side of it and I'm just going to press it on that outer V. So I'm very lightly dabbing the eyeshadow from the crease down towards my lash line on like an angle. And I'm also applying a little bit of this into my crease, just very, very small amount. Now don't worry about this being blended. We're really just applying the eyeshadow now and we'll worry about the blending in a sec. So you just wanna really pack that color on to make it nice and intense. And now I'm gonna go into that same Morphe brush that we previously used, this is the M506. I really, really like this for blending out my outer V because it's nice and small and it's not gonna push the color everywhere. And I'm just going to diffuse just the edges. And don't worry if it gets a little bit messy on that outer corner because I am going to give you guys another trick on how to fix that. And sometimes I'll even go in with a bit of a matte black. I'm using Makeup Geek Corrupt. I'm taking like the smallest amount and applying that really, really concentrated on that outer corner. Like I'm barely even touching my eye right now. It's almost impossible for me not to create a mess on the outer corner of my eye. It always looks a little bit um, patchy, unfortunately. It's just something that always happens for me when it comes to eyeshadow. I'm sure this is something that a lot of you probably deal with as well. I just like to take a cream concealer. I'm just taking my RCMA one and I load it up on a flat definer brush and I will just run that along the edge of my eyeshadow to really sharpen things up. So I basically just go from the outer corner of my eye up towards the tail end of my brow. I really do not like my eyeshadow to surpass that outer corner of my eye. If it goes any lower than that, it will actually start to make your eye look droopy and that's obviously not what we want. We typically like our eyes to look nice and lifted. So if any eyeshadow surpass that point, you could always just clean that up with some concealer. Now I always like to just take a clean fluffy brush, this has absolutely nothing on it, and just run along the top edge of my eyeshadow to make sure that everything's nice and diffused. Because even after all that work, things could always look a little bit choppy, you never know. 
and just using a clean brush that has nothing on it will help in sort of softening things if anything needs to be softened. So for the lid shade, I personally always like to use something shimmery just because I find that it really does brighten down my eyes and I always think it looks so nice and pretty. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm actually gonna be using a very, very light um, shade that has a bit of a sheen. This is Rapunzel from Makeup Geek. As for the lid shades, it really depends on the type of formula that you're going for. If you're using something a little bit more foiled or metallic, then I would recommend using a synthetic brush. A synthetic brush works really great because you're actually able to wet it. So if you're ever using something more metallic um, and you want it to really pop, then I would recommend spraying your brush with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus, a setting spray, and, and that will make your metallic eyeshadow really pop and stand out. You could also use a natural haired brush if you want to put a matte shade on your lid or you don't want something that's like too crazy foiled and intense, you could always just use a natural hair brush and not wet it. Today I am going to be using a synthetic brush and I already wet it with a little bit of setting spray. I'm just going to apply this all over my lid but I'm not going past like the center of my lid because I don't want to overlap with the other shades that we already applied like the matte shades. So the lid shade is applied, but as you can see, it looks really harsh between the dark brown and the lid shade because there's nothing in between it to sort of transition them into each other. This is something that I actually only very recently started doing and realizing that it made like the biggest difference in the world. Um, I actually started to put a bit of a transition shade between the lid shade and the outer corner. So I am once again going to be taking my Morphe M506 and I'm going to grab the ColourPop Note to Self. This is the first crease shade that we use. And I'm just going to very, very lightly apply some of this in between the lid shade and the dark brown. You see what a difference that makes? Instead of it being harsh like this, it just looks a lot softer. So we are actually almost done. I almost completely forgot to apply eyeshadow on the lower lash line. Now for me personally, I do find that lower lash line eyeshadow to be really important in order to finish off a look, especially if the upper part of your lid is quite heavy. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go in with really heavy eyeshadow. So I typically like to use a pencil brush. I'm going to be taking this NYX pencil brush and I'm going to go into the transition shade that we used, which was Peach Smoothie. And I'm just going to very simply just sweep it from the outer corner of my eye towards the inner corner of my eye. Now I'm going to take the first crease shade that we use, that color pop shade, and sort of just buff that along my lower lash line just to deepen that up a bit. And again, this is still very light. It's not heavy at all, but it still does make the look a little bit more balanced. Now if you want even more definition, then I would go into the deepest shade that we use, which was Fudge, and I'm going in with a very, very small little detail brush. This is my Real Techniques detail brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this, and what I typically like to do, especially if I'm going for more of an elongated eye look, I will just apply that deep shade only on the first half, outer half of my eye. And this is, again, just going to really elongate the eye and pull it out. So I'm really picking that up and putting it very close to my lashes. And you also want to make sure that the lower lash line is connected to the eyeshadow on the upper lid because you don't want it to look disjointed. You want everything to look like one. And now I'm going to go into my pencil brush that I used before and I'm just going to buff along the lower edge just to make sure that it's not harsh at all. I'm going to go back in with my detail brush from Real Techniques. I'm just sort of like wiping it off on the back of my hand. And I'm going to highlight my inner corner and brow bone. I'm actually going to be using the same Rapunzel shade that we used on the lid, but I'm going to be using it dry. So I'm just applying this right underneath the arch of my brow, putting most of the color there. And I'm basically just like following the tail of my brow like that. But I'm putting most of the shade right underneath my arch to really like lift the eye. All right guys, now it's time for my inner corner tip. Now, I don't know about you, but for the longest time, I always like just question my abilities of applying eyeshadow because I can never get my inner corner to look the way it looks on like so many other people. Like, you know when you see people apply inner corner highlight and it's like, holy shit, it looks smooth, it looks gorgeous, it's like popping. And for some reason, every time that I would do it, it would never look like that. It would just look like a bit of a mess and would go into like my tear duct and would get all like gross and messy. I finally figured out how to finally apply the inner corner highlight in the perfect way. So I go from above and I don't apply the highlighter directly on the inner corner tear duct area. I instead apply it more on like the side of my nose. Let me show you. So I go from above and I just sort of pack the color on right in that area. 
And look at that. You got that beautiful, bright inner corner. If you feel like it looks too intense, which I sort of do, you just take a clean brush and sort of just buff it and it will tone it down. Beautiful. So I'm just going to apply some mascara and we will see what this look looks like all complete. So here is what the eye look looks like with mascara. It is now officially completely finished. And if you're anything like me and you just got mascara all over the eyeshadow look that took you two and a half hours to complete, do not fret. All you gotta do is just let that mascara completely dry. Then you wanna take a spoolie, any spoolie, something that looks like this, and then just scrape it off and it will completely come off. That is it for today's tutorial. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments all of your thoughts, what you would like to see next, and any additional questions that you may have, I would be happy to answer them. And please, if you see any questions that people are asking and you may have like an additional tip that you wanna add, feel free to start a conversation down below. Our community is so awesome because I feel like the comment section is always such a helpful place. So yeah, leave all your thoughts down there. Love to see them. Of course, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy back to basics videos like these and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.